Hey there, let's perform some C++ release mode debugging. Okay, so generally debugging release mode C or C++ is confusing and complicated due to the performance optimizations. Changing the compiler settings to debug mode is not always possible even though we need to debug a lot in production. Let me present some quirks that can happen when debugging release mode applications and how to deal with those limitations. The two examples I will show are how to debug when the debugger seems to step backwards and how to debug when functions seem to go missing. First, let me show my setup before we move on to WinDebug. So what we have here is an instance of Visual Studio with an MFC application. The application is not important at all, but what we want to do is we want to view the compiler settings. Let me show you the configuration manager. So what I have here is I have four different kinds of builds in the configuration manager. I have a debug build, which is just the standard debug build. And I have a release build, which is the standard release build. What I also have is a no optimized build and a small size build. The no optimized build is a build in which there are no optimization supply, even though it is release mode. And the small size build is a build in which the optimization is to make a smaller binary. The settings for each build is over here. Ensure that all the symbols are being written to disk by enabling the generate debug info even for the release configuration. We will need the PDBs to debug the release mode application. Now that we have all that, let's switch over to WinDebug and start the debug mode application first to show how breakpoints should work. So we launch the application by going to file. I have launched the application many times, so I'm just going to go to recent and this is my debug mode uh, application over here. So I'm going to click on it, it's going to load and what we want to do is we want to attach a breakpoint and step through a function just to show how stepping through a debug mode application should work. So what I've done is I've made a function that is really easy to find called onClick. And this function will serve as the test function to debug. So I'm just going to put a breakpoint on the function onClick over here by using a BM. Uh, that's just a handy trick. If you use BM, you can just put wildcards in the uh, search and it will apply a breakpoint to all the wildcards. So I'm just going to run this application and I'm just going to click the button to trigger the breakpoint. So let's view the application. So the application is over here. I'm going to click on the do something button which will trigger the breakpoint that opens the source code over here. So let's step through the function. I'm going to click on the source button over here. What this does is that whenever I press F10 and step, it's going to step one line of source code and not one line of assembler. So I'm just going to press F10 over here. It's going to step one line, F10 again steps another line, F10 again steps into the, fun into the if statement, steps again, steps again, and steps again. So this shows that the stepping of the function it works as expected. There is nothing wrong with it. So let's repeat the same stepping again, but this time with release mode and we're going to observe something pretty unusual. Okay, so I've gone ahead and actually restarted WinDebug and I've attached to a release mode application and I put the breakpoint in exactly the same function. And we're going to step this function and we're going to observe something a bit unusual. We're going to observe that the stepping goes backwards. Okay, as usual, I'm going to press F10 to step through the function. It's going to step. It's going to step. It's going to go into the if statement, but observe, it jumped to line 182. Now, if I press F10, it's not going to go to the end of the function. It's going to go up like that. And the reason it does that is not because of a bug, it's because of optimization. Let me resume the application and hit the breakpoint a second time. To see what's really happening, what we do is we go to the view menu and we select the disassembly window. 
Let me just move the screen just a little bit so that we can see the disassembly. So the disassembly is the actual assembler that was used to compile the function. If we go back to the home menu and we select assembly as the stepping, we can step through this function and see exactly why it goes backwards. So let's go back to the position of the if statement. So I'm gonna, just going to press F10 over here and I'm going to step to the if statement and then I'm going to switch back to assembler mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step in the disassembly and show that the jump to line 182 is not a bug. So let's step the disassembly one time and then we step it again and we step it again. Now the assembler for this part is just comparing the operands that are being checked in the if statement. This is just the expression that's being checked. Then it goes to the je which is the jump equal. This function over here, this part of the function that it is jumping to is actually line 182. If I step with F10, it goes into line 182 which is list box at string. Now if I jump one more time from here, it's going to go to this move which will go back to line 181. The reason for this is that when the assembler is written, the compiler optimizations is for the fastest code to be produced. In this case, calling the function to add string is actually faster because of the way assembler works. Now, I don't want to bore you with the complicated details of the CPU why this is so, but there are a lot of optimizations which are very obscure that will happen when you put release mode. So this is one of those obscure optimizations in which a function that is on line 182 is actually faster if it is the first line compared to line 181. There is no consequential impact to the program when the code is changed like that. So the compiler chooses to compile the function in the other way around so that it is faster. Now, at this line of assembler, there is another optimization. This line of assembler says move the value 1 into this memory address here, which is the variable mvar1. But in the code, it actually says uh, call this function called get first value. If I try to put a breakpoint at get first value, it doesn't work. What I'm doing is I'm actually pressing F9 at this line and nothing's happening. The reason is this function actually does not exist anymore because release mode, in order to generate the fastest code possible, the compiler has evaluated that this function is pretty much pointless. So it has taken the value 1 and inserted it directly into mvar1. So when I look at the assembler, it does not have a function call and it does not take the result of this function and put it into mvar1. Instead, it just assigns the value 1 directly into the variable. I can verify this by just searching all the symbols and finding all the functions that should exist in this class. I can see that the function onClicked, which is this function over here, it does exist, but there's no get first value or get second value. That's because the compiler has optimized and removed those functions. I can verify in the disassembly that the functions don't need to exist. The value can be inserted directly. So this is one of those quirks we have to deal with if we are debugging release mode. Now, these are not the only two optimizations that exist in this application. There are plenty more optimizations that you can encounter when debugging release mode. I wanted to make this first video with the two simplest quirks that you will discover when debugging release mode. I will make videos in the future with more complicated quirks that are pretty much harder to explain. But these two seem to be the most common where if statements uh, generate code that kind of run backwards and missing functions. There are also cases where variables will go missing like local variables that are not needed and entire functions that are rewritten where even though there are no if statements, the functions may appear to run backwards. Let me know in the comments below if you have had the challenge of debugging release mode and found these quirks really difficult to deal with within WinDebug. 
And how did you go about working around this kind of problem? Anyway, gentle reminder to subscribe, give a like and hit that bell icon to be reminded of future videos. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.